my goodness, no, it's like Night of the Living Dead. The zombie will just not die. Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. This month's Boost My Build, we have a lot of crazy builds. This is the series where we take your PC part picker list, we tear them up, and we put them back together to massively boost up your performance. If you get value in the video, give it a like. It makes a big difference, especially to this guy right here. And of course, subscribe and click the bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, Let's jump into it. Before that, this video is sponsored by VIP SCD Key. Say goodbye to crazy expensive Windows 10 licenses and that terrible Activate Windows 10 watermark. Right now, use the links in the video description, head over to VIP SCD Key, and get a Windows 10 Home or Pro OEM license for a great price. Pick your product license, then use the PC Builder discount code PC25 for an additional 25% off. Go to the activation settings on your PC, put in the code, and boom, you have a fully licensed Windows 10 for a crazy low price, which can be upgraded for free to Windows 11. Use the links in the video description below. Our exemplar on this, this is their first build. They want something to play high-end games, high to max settings, decent FPS. They mostly play Minecraft with ray tracing, but they also want to be able to play higher end games. They want to get an RTX 3070. However, that's not gonna be part of this build. Okay, the main reason that they want 32 gigs of memory is they wanna keep a lot of tabs open while still having high FPS in games. They may do some editing and some Blender workloads as well. Okay, but we also need to get a monitor and their budget's only $1,800 Australian. That's only $1,300 USD. That's a lot to squeeze in to $1,300. Let's see what you've got. Oh my goodness, no, it's like Night of the Living Dead. The zombie will just not die. What am I talking about? I'm talking about this. Exploding power supply. Let's start there before we even jump into the build. I'm sorry, exploding power supplies. Gigabyte 7 P750 GM. We all know this one. Now listen, I understand how this happens if you're new to uh, building a gaming PC. You, you don't know all this kind of stuff. This is why you submit it to Boost My Build. This is why you submit it to forums and get some feedback on your build. So you're doing the right thing there. Amen. Here's the big challenge with this is that this is going to be a really bad power supply. I don't want just want to ding gigabyte. Everybody makes bad power supply. However, this one is a kind of a spectacularly bad one. So we're going to get you a new power supply. We'll start there. But let's take a look at the rest of the build. And I see, you know, let's start with the monitor. So one of the challenges I see here, you want a 3070 gaming build, but we're going to end up with this kind of very budget-ish 1080p monitor. Nothing wrong with a monitor, but why are we spending all this money on other things with an RTX 3070 and not getting a monitor that's going to allow us to take advantage of that graphics card? Otherwise, what's the point? Just get a cheaper, like an RX 6600 instead and call it a day. And I can see that we're overspending in key areas. Like we've got the i5-12600K. This is a great CPU. It's great for productivity work. I know you wanted to get into video editing, wanted to get into Blender, but you know, it might be a little bit more extravagant than we can afford. I see other areas where we, I feel like we're just cutting costs. We're overspending in certain areas and we're cutting costs in critical areas. One of the critical areas is we're only going with 120 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler, the Cooler Master Master Liquid ML120. Now, I'm not necessarily dinging this cooler. I just happen to think that, well, it's kind of a fact that 120 millimeter, 140 millimeter all-in-one liquid coolers only perform about as well as a budget tower air cooler. And they cost a lot more because there's a pump. It's just a lot more intricate device, right? So for me, this is a non-starter and I'm not sure why we didn't just go 240 millimeters is the minimum size to me for a liquid cooler unless you have a small form factor build and this is all you can fit in, but that's not the case here. Speaking of cases, I, okay, this is starting to make more sense now. Now we're at the NZXT H510 Elite and I can see this, by the way, you're buying this for $229, way too much money. And I can see why we're only going with 120 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler because this case, and I don't like this case, by the way, I know some of you are love it out there, but the NZXT virus gets in your brain and it's a deadly virus to PC builders because it gets you to ship all your money to NZXT and make bad decisions in other areas. And that's why you've got a 120 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler is because this, that's all you can fit there. That's all you can fit there. Why are we doing this? I just don't understand. We're going, we've already come down to a 1080p ultra budget monitor and we're way overspending on this case. I just see priorities as being upside down here. Now listen, this Z690 motherboard, this is just like the budget kind of uh, tier Z690 motherboard. The Z-Arms would be probably fine on this board for an i5-12600K, but we're not getting much in the way of features. And overall, just I'm not really impressed with this particular motherboard. It doesn't have great audio on it, and we're spending $260 on it. Yikes, that's just, 
that's kind of insane, especially when I see that we are also going with this Wi-Fi card. So you're spending another $45, it looks here on this Wi-Fi card. Why didn't we just add the cost of the Wi-Fi card and the motherboard together and go up a tier of motherboards? I think something like the, the Aorus Z690M is a decent motherboard, great audio on it, other good features on it. And it has Wi-Fi for, I think, probably less than the combination of these two. So that's just one of the areas I think we're, we're missing the mark. But let's talk about some of the good things. Um, I love the memory. Uh, if you're gonna get 32 gigabytes, two by 16, DDR4, 3200, CL16, definitely the place to be. Looks like a good kit. I love that we went with a budget oriented uh, SSD drive here, an NVMe SSD, Crucial P1. Overall, I just think we can do so much better. At $1,781, you're so close to your budget already. We're just not getting what, uh, the maximum value of this PC. So let's see what we can do. Okay, I call this the doesn't explode 1440p gaming build. Why? Because it doesn't explode and it plays games at 1440p. Let's take a look. Let's go ahead and start off with the power supply. I just went ahead and got the ASUS Tough Gaming 750 watt, 80 plus bronze certified power supply. This is a C tier rated unit. I just went ahead and went with this unit because it's relatively cheap, because it's gonna give us enough power for the build and it's rated on the B tier on the PSU cultist list. So now that our build doesn't explode, let's take a look at it. We actually finished $1,680. So I came in $100 less than you did. And I think we're gonna get some amazing performance of this. I went with the i5-12400. Now you can go for the 12400F for about $20 less, but I know you said you wanted to get into video editing. And if you do the integrated graphics in the iGPU here, uh, the 12400 will actually help reduce render times. For the cooler, I just went with something simple. Arctic Freezer 34 Esports Duo. This is more than enough for the 12400. Frankly, you could just use the included box cooler. It's a little noisy, I've heard at this point. So I would go with this instead. A great cooler, just make sure you get the LGA 1700 mounting bracket. For the motherboard, I just went with something simple here. The B660M DS3HAX. And this is a much cheaper B660 motherboard. Similar features to the board that you were looking at, but I think it has actually some more additional connect activity to it in the rear here. And it's got Wi-Fi on it for far less than you were paying for that really kind of crummy tier Z690 that in my personal opinion, shouldn't even really exist. But we stuck it out with your memory, nothing wrong with it. And we also stuck it out with your SSD drive, great drive. But let's talk about the case because you, we're gonna uninfect you with the <laughs> NZXT virus. I'm gonna go with the Silverstone Farrah H1M. Now listen, we came in significantly under budget here. If you wanna go with that, uh, with that case, you certainly can. I know I've knocked it a lot. If that's your aesthetic and you've decided this is what I want, by all means, go for it, I, you know, despite me having a little bit of fun with it. But this case, I want you to consider as an alternative, much cheaper. It's a good overall case, good airflow on it. I would recommend it. The build quality is not that high on it, don't get me wrong, but certainly once the thing is assembled, it'll be just fine. Now, of course, you need fans for that, so I went with an up here uh, fan pack. This is just three ARGB fans with this nice little controller here that's really awesome that I've used in the past. Uh, I would use two of these in the front and I would replace the uh, non-RGB fan with one of these in the rear. And I think the piece de resistance here is we went with the Gigabyte M27Q. This is a high quality budget 1440p gaming monitor with 170 hertz refresh rate, great features, KVM features, all kinds of nice little things. Overall, fantastic monitor. One of the ones that I recommend is one of the best budget 1440p gaming monitors in my uh, best gaming monitor video. If you wanna check that out, I'll leave a link to it down in the video description as always. Overall though, for this build, for $1,680, we got you a build that's gonna allow you to do massive amounts of gaming for this thing for an RTX 3070 and start to get into video editing and things of that nature. So I hope you feel like your build is boosted. Ishmael, Ishmael loves our videos, awesome. They built a computer two months ago to play AAA titles, but the wife is taking it over to play Roblox. Oh no, he wants to build a PC for her, doesn't want to spend more than a thousand. She likes miniature things. You've already bought an ITX case for it. Let's see what you got. Okay, I can see here we've got a pretty expensive ITX Ryzen 50 6600G build, which is like, ah, I don't know why we did this. I get that you want to build an ITX build. And if you don't mind throwing the money, that's fine. Remember, aesthetics is can also be an important thing that you're looking for. So as long as you're clear on what you're looking for and you're fine with this outcome, that's okay. I just want you to know you're sacrificing a lot of performance by doing this kind of build. 
ITX build for a budget PC. ITX PCs, I would typically consider for more expensive builds. That way you can make sure to get all the right components. You know you're spending a lot already and you know you're gonna be over overspending on certain other components in order to get it into the right form factor for you. But when you're at the budget level already and you're trying to squeeze as much performance as you can, forcing a form factor on this is gonna add a lot of cost is really, really brutal. Let's go through and why that is. 5600G, of course, great APU, right? I'll probably play Roblox at fine frame rates. I would, of course, love to get her a graphics card, even if we end up with the 5600G. But for $220, hard to argue. Here's your problem, though, because you've already got this Thermaltake Core V1 a mini desktop case, which only will have ITX boards. The ITX boards are very, very expensive. In particular, we need one that has BIOS flashback on it because a lot of boards still do not come with a BIOS for the Ryzen 5600G. Remember, that was the last 5600G, 5700G were the most recent CPUs that AMD launched and they launched them over the summer in 2021. Still, to this day, a lot of boards are not coming with updated BIOS on them, so we need a BIOS flashback. And because we're forced into a small form factor, we end up buying this $190 great motherboard, B550i. But this is a motherboard I would expect to see on a much higher end system, not a Ryzen 5600G APU system. For the memory, we're, I don't understand why we're going with such fast memory, DDR4, 3600, CL18. In my testing, frankly, going up to 3600 memory over 3200 CL16 memory, it's like one FPS difference. And we're spending a lot of money because we also want 32 gigs of it. Again, I don't know why we, we think we need 32 gigs here. 16 gigs should be all we need. Remember, this is a budget system. We want to make sure we're squeezing out performance out of every nook and cranny. I love your drive choice, uh, Western Digital Blue SN550. This is $94 right now. I feel like we could probably find a cheaper one. They're, these budget drives kind of go on like a cycle. So maybe next week, or maybe you've already bought this drive and you got it for like $80 or something like that. Just be cognizant that these budget drives kind of cycle in and out of sales. So I just tend to buy the cheapest one. For the power supply, I feel like we went with a really high spec unit here. Uh, 550 watts is more than we need. Now, we're getting towards the low end, so maybe you just got that. But for $80, I just feel like we're spending too much on this power supply, money we could be using in other areas of the bill. Then, of course, you went ahead and got two uh, Pure Wings, three fans. That's fine. Uh, it looks like you want this to be quiet. So you can consider some cheaper alternatives like the Arctic P12. That's usually for like six or seven dollars, but you really only do need two fans for this case. Uh, probably both on the exhaust on this one. It'll just create a negative pressure situation. You'll get enough airflow through it. Eight hundred seventeen dollars. I feel like we're really missing an opportunity here to get a rig with the graphics cards. Let me see what I can do with this. All right, I called this one. This plays more games because this is actually going to play more games. We still went with the fifty six hundred G, and of course we're going with the case that you kind of already bought. This uh, it's only sixty dollars. So. Uh, Thermaltake Core V1, and it's been out for quite a while, along with your B550i extreme expensive motherboard here because we're kind of locked into that for the small form factor. But what I did is I came down on the memory to two by eight gigabytes. You only need DDR4, 3200 CL16 memory. And I'm gonna show you why in a second. $50 right now, dirt cheap. Much better than $150 we were just spending to get 32 gigabytes of memory. I also just went ahead and trimmed off a little bit of fat here with the Silicon Power A60. Just happens to be the current budget drive that's the cheapest. Again, nothing wrong with the drive you selected. Just happens to be at the time I'm looking at it, um, it's up a little bit versus its competitors. So I went with something a little cheaper. And then for the graphics card, we are gonna buy a used RX 580 for about $225. You can actually get them often for like $180 to $200, but I'm going to put $225 in here just so you can feel like you get the, the one that you like, uh, as opposed to just grabbing the, the cheapest one off of eBay. I would buy it off eBay. You get buyer protection on there. That way, if somebody sends you a graphics card that dies in like two weeks or something like that, eBay will help you get your money back. I feel very comfortable buying. A lot of miners are selling off RX 570 4 gigabyte cards. You can't mine Ethereum with them, but you could mine all other altcoins. The value of those other altcoins has dropped significantly, but this will play a lot more games than that APU. Then in order to continue to save more money, we just went with the A-Data XPG Pylon. It's a 450 watt, 80 plus bronze certified unit. Great unit. It's a C tier on the PSU Cultist list. Uh, nothing much more to say about it other than this is all the power we're going to need for this rig. And then just to further reduce price a little bit, again, shave off some more nickels here. 
I went with uh, Arctic P12 silent fans. They're just about half the price of the fans you were looking at. Just trying to shave off every nickel we can here. Overall, for not that much more than you were about to spend, we are gonna get a an actual gaming PC with a real graphics card here, an RX 570. It's gonna allow you to play games far beyond Roblox if you want. Let's take a quick jaunt and let's figure out exactly how much it's costing us to build in that ITX, that small form factor case. So instead I've swapped out that case with the Thermaltake Versa H18, which is a micro ATX. So we can get micro ATX motherboards in this thing, about the same price as the case that you were looking at for $54. So we stuck it out with the Ryzen 5 5600G. I would really have preferred to go with an i3 12 100 right now they're just out of stock absolutely everywhere so given that they're not available to us and given the 12 400 we're gonna have to buy a pricier motherboard with that in order to keep costs down the 5600 g is essentially kind of the replacement for the ryzen 3600 right now it's faster than the ryzen 3600 both uh, multi-threaded as well as single core and gaming especially when we can Pair that with a very, very cheap B450 motherboard like the ASUS Prime B450M-A2. Now the two, ASUS re-released a lot of their motherboards uh, with the II, the two behind them. Those motherboards all have BIOS flashbacks, so you can feel free to flash the BIOS on this board. You can see the button for it's right there. $79 right now is a dirt cheap price to pay for it. Then with the same uh, SSD, we went with the RX 570 again for $225. Same power supply. I went in and kept one of your Pure Wings fans instead of going with the Arctic fan. Uh, the Thermal Take case does come with one fan. You only really need two. But look at that, $763 for a massive performance increase over that APU build. This is where I want to, I really want to get into people's minds that it is possible to build budget gaming PCs once again. Um, if you haven't seen my video on how to do that in some of the build templates I looked at, I'm going to leave a link down in the video description. Check it out. But this is something for you to consider if if you don't want to go ITX. Okay, so we're going to do something different for this next build. Now, in the past, I've said we're only doing new builds because it can get really confusing to folks if we do a, an upgrade, but let's try one because Philip Newby went ahead and submitted an upgrade. I want to give it a shot. Let's check this out. They're a new sub and viewer. They're an IT pro. They've been building their own PCs for about 20 years, but their current build's about three to four years behind for a lot of various reasons. They just want to be able to upgrade their existing rig for about 800 to a thousand dollars so they can play games like the division 2 and other modern fps games at 1080p good frame rates let's see what they've got okay here's their build and yes it's relatively old let's start off with the cpu they've got an i5 6600k this is a four core four thread cpu yikes Definitely not cutting the mustard in 2022. Uh, we definitely want to upgrade this because even if we went with a faster graphics card, this is going to bottleneck us for sure. For the cooler, we went, they went with the Hypermaster 212, still an adequate cooler. And the thing with these coolers is they're good forever, pretty much new thermal paste on them. The only moving component you need to worry about is the fan. And if that gives out, buy another 120 millimeter fan, strap it to the front and go. The motherboard, I don't really think we're gonna get anything out of this motherboard. It's an ASUS Z170 board, perfectly adequate for the four core, th four thread CPU. You could probably package this up and resell it on eBay for maybe a hundred bucks. Now here are some components that I think we will get value out of. We got G-Skill Ripjaw, 32 gigabytes, uh, DDR4 3200 CL16, still relatively fast memory. I would have said we would probably keep it even if it's like DDR4 3000 speed memory. Though, remember, uh, memory is so cheap right now that getting a kit of memory only will cost you about $50 for 16 gigabytes of memory, which is really all you need for gaming. They got a Samsung 970 Evo plus 500 gigabyte, perfectly adequate. I would not buy this drive new 500 gigabytes. I would definitely get one terabyte or higher. Otherwise, if you're gonna go with something this small, typically get a budget drive, but you already have this drive, it's already purchased, we're definitely gonna reuse it. And here's the other bottleneck. We had a bottleneck on the CPU side, but we also have a bottleneck on the GPU side. We've got a GTX 970. Now this graphics card is about an RX 570 levels of performance. And if you're happy with that and you wanted to build like a super budget gaming PC right now, I would recommend even buying one of these used. However, I can tell you want more frame rates, you wanna play at higher settings. So we're gonna to need to come up the ladder on the graphics card as well. But just know that right now, if you act quickly before graphic used graphic card prices completely slide off into the abyss, you could probably sell this for about $150 to $200 and recoup some of that money. 
Case is nothing spectacular. It's an older Fantex uh, version with all the, you know, five and a quarter inch bay drives and uh, things from days gone by. That being said, still perfectly adequate for what we're doing right now. No reason, reason to replace it. Power supply, EVGA GQ 750 watt. Now this is a C tier rated unit. However, if this unit is kicking about six years old, this, I might start thinking about replacing it. That being said, I, I don't know as we have enough budget here to get all the upgrades, so we may have to end up reusing this power supply. And then this monitor, you got the Samsung CF398 POS <laughs> monitor, POS standing for LOL, right? Look, it's a 60 hertz office monitor, not something that I really want to be gaming on in 2022. I think we can do a lot better. Okay, so I called this Boost My Upgrade. Let's see what we've got here. We upgraded both the platform and the graphics card as well as got you a new monitor for just about $1,011. Now I know that's $11 more than you wanted to spend. Let me talk you into spending that $11. And let's start backwards. Let's start with the monitor. We went ahead and got you a very nice 1080p, 144 hertz gaming monitor, the AOC 27G2. $210 over at Amazon. And in my best gaming monitors, I continue to recommend this monitor as a fantastic 1080p option at the budget level. And of course we know we wanna build any good gaming PC around the graphics cards. I went with the Radeon RX 6600. I was trying to squeeze in a 6600 XT here. I just don't think you've got enough uh, money for that. Now listen, $480, this is on the higher end of what the 6600s are going for. Not all of them are in PC part picker, so check Newegg, check Amazon, check Best Buy uh, to find the cheapest one. It doesn't really matter which one you get, quite honestly. Just know that you can find some of the cheaper 6600 XT cards for about $550. They go into stock and they, they leave stock pretty quickly, but they are out there if you wanna invest a little bit more money. For the platform, we upgraded you to a modern i5-12400F. Now you certainly could go with the 12400 instead. Honestly, there's only about a $6 price difference. I probably would go with the 12400. I just selected the cheapest one because I know we're already over, a little over budget. That being said, if you're just gaming, the i5-12400F is plenty for gaming. You don't need the integrated graphics and this thing will smoke your current CPU. We went ahead and stuck it out with your Cooler Master Hyper 212 Black Edition. Great cooler, perfectly adequate for the 12400. Uh, all you really need to do is reach out to Cooler Master and make sure you get the LGA 1700 bracket uh, so that you can attach it to the current motherboard because this will not fit on the, uh, on the new LGA 1700. For the motherboard, we simply went with uh, tried and true, cheap motherboard, Gigabyte B660M DS3H. This doesn't have Wi-Fi or anything. Perfectly adequate budget motherboard for what you're doing. It'll get the job done, great features. If you want something more premium with more premium audio, unfortunately, for some reason, there's a huge gulf on B660 boards between kind of the low end boards like this that are good budget boards and then the ones that have the better features like better audio. There's like a $60, $70 gap in the market I don't really understand it, but that's where we're at right now. Hopefully that will change in the future. Then of course we stayed with your uh, your memory, great memory, DDR4 3200CL16. Don't need to replace this, especially when it's just gonna add cost. We stuck with your drive. I would recommend thinking about though, going out and buying a one terabyte budget NVMe, maybe like a Western Digital SN550 or a Silicon Power A60, something at the one terabyte level. You can always use this as a boot drive, but that'll give you more storage space for games and things of that nature. We did end up reusing your case and your power supply. I couldn't find enough money to upgrade that PSU. Now, if you have another $75 and you wanna upgrade the PSU, it might be a good idea to take a look at. But overall, for $1,011, we just gave you a PC that will absolutely smoke most modern titles at 1080p, and we gave you a monitor that you can actually enjoy those titles at, as well as a platform that's gonna work for you for another several years, and probably at least one more graphics card update. So hopefully you feel like your build is upgraded. Thank you so much for joining me on this month's Boost My Build. If you got value of the video, give it a like. It makes a big difference to the channel, and especially this guy right here really appreciates it. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. If you missed any of the Boost My Builds, I'm gonna put the whole playlist right here. Keep it going, check it out, watch Boost My Build all night long with a bag of popcorn, and we'll catch you on the next one.